Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's presentation is about Zenodo repository. The presentation is a part of a playlist on Open Science, and the purpose of the presentation is to help you share and archive your own work so that others can cite it and explore it. Well, I'm going to talk about what is the Zenodo and why should we use a data repository, how can we use it, how to report our data set before some takeaway messages. So let's start with Zenodo. What is Zenodo? Well, actually we need a repository like Zenodo because it is an online open access repository that will help you to facilitate making your data available and it will allow others to replicate your research work and for sure it follows the fair principles of findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data sets. Now you will ask me why should I use a data uh, repository like Zenodo? Well, in fact, you need to have always to provide a data availability statement when you are submitting your research. Whether you are submitting a master's thesis, a PhD dissertation, or a journal article, or even a proposal, you will always be asked to provide a data availability statement. And to come up with a data availability statement, you need to track all the research outputs funded by your funding streams. You need to cap keep track of the availability of the data. And those funders will ask you to include the links for your data sets, whether in the format of a URL or a DOI. Here comes the importance of having your data already available into repositories. Now, Zenodo specifically, what is Zenodo? Well, the meaning of Zenodo, actually Zenodo is the name derived from Zenodotus, the first librarian of the ancient library of Alexandria and father of the first recorded use of metadata and landmark in library uh, history. So here comes the name. And who is hosting Zenodo? Actually, Zenodo is a general purpose open repository developed under the European Open Air program and operated by the CERN. So as you can see, Zenodo is for free and it is a European uh, repository. It has an open access infrastructure for research in Europe and it is based on the open fair created uh, principles. And they have the link here of Open Science EU if you want to know, learn about it. It is part of catch all data repository service for EU researchers since 2013. Now, how can I classify my data? I need to understand that there are uh, three types of uh, data sets for Zenodo. I can have a metadata with uh, all types of spreadsheets, data sets, images, codes, and so on. I can have data sets and I can have data verses. And in this sense, I can have different examples of data sets like uh, spreadsheets, CSVIs, organized collection of tables, uh, file in a property format that contains the data, collection of files, structured object with data, images, uh, file related to machine learnings or trained parameters or neural network structure uh, definitions. So the repository is totally open to most of the types of files. You just need to make sure that it is a universal format and it can be interoperable. Now, how can I use Zenodo? First thing you have to visit the website of Zenodo, which is zenodo.org. And the first thing you can benefit from is to tar start using it for searching for existing data sets. This could be the first thing to do. If you want to deposit your own data sets, you have to go to the login option. And from there you can log in with your uh, ORCID or ORCID identity. If you are on GitHub, you can uh, access with it. Or you can just have uh, access and you sign up with email and password. And from there, you can start getting uh, your new upload. As you can see, when you go to the a new upload page, you will have here an option next to the search bar, which is called upload in the menu. And down here, you need to define what is the type of data, whether it's a publication, it's a poster, presentation, data set, image, video, software, lesson, uh, physical object, workflow, or other. So by that, you can define it and you can just have a drag and drop file concept. Once done and you have your files uploaded, you directly will have information about the DOI keywords and the licenses. So Zenodo will issue for you after the publication a DOI and you will have a full description of the publication type, the DOI name, the publication date, the title, the authors, and the description. But take care of something that Zenodo does not allow you to change the data set after it is published. So this is uh, disadvantage compared to that Harvard Dataverse. Now, here is the data rela related to the DOI. If you need to report it, 
And don't forget that the power of Zenodo that it is linked to JIT, uh, GitHub. So meaning if you have any code written in GitHub, you can directly reposit it on Zenodo. So through from GitHub through uh, Zenodo, you can have a DOI for your code. So also we had a lecture about open codes. Now, how can I report my data sets, for example, in the context of journal submission? All you need to do when you are submitting a journal, you will be asked in a certain moment, are you going to share your data? Do you have a data set to share? In this sense, you have to say yes. You can define the data set and then you pick up Zenodo from the list of repositories that could be available, such as Harvard Dataverse, Dryad, uh, ICPSR, Mendeley, um, NERSA, uh, Pangea, uh, Run My Code, Simbad, for example. You pick up Zenodo, you define the DOI of your publication, and here you go, your paper is linked to the data set and to the repository that is hosting your data set. Voila, that's it of today's presentation. I want to share with you some takeaway messages before leaving. So what is Zenodo simply? It is a valuable tool for sharing and receiving credit. Zenodo is a reliable archival repository for data set and it's mainly developed for uh, European context, but it also hosts research from outside the European context and it's open access for free. It provides permanent preservation with backup in multiple locations. It does not allow to change the data or update it after depositing. This is very important. And it assures that the data is accessible, well-structured and well-described to be used by others. And finally, it complies with the European Commission and national funders' open access requirements and policies for publication and data. So it is also a logical choice if you are based in Europe. By that, I end up today's presentation. I hope it was useful. This was a second example for a repository after the data, Harvard Dataverse example. This was part of a playlist on open science. I hope you benefit from it and good luck with uh, depositing your first data set and good luck with your publication. Thank you very much.